Altria Group, one of the leading tobacco companies in the market, has seen good results in 2022. Revenue was down 2.9%, but net income was up 84% year over year, while the stock price is down around 11% since. Today, we'll take a three-step approach to thoroughly evaluate the company and determine their fair value. Step 1. Margin of safety. We'll assess Altria's key metrics and ratios to determine if we should be more or less cautious when determining a fair value. Here, we'll dive into Altria's financial statements and assess critical metrics and ratios. In step 3, we use a combination of valuation techniques such as discounted cash flow and discounted dividend to get an insight in the value of the business. This step allows us to understand whether the stock is undervalued or overvalued in the current market on different metrics. In conclusion, by combining the findings from the three steps, we'll ultimately determine the fair value of Altria Group as an investment opportunity. To determine the final valuation of the stock, we'll use a margin of safety. This margin of safety will be based on financial ratios, the financial health and the growth of the company. I will be using a 25% standard margin of safety that can never go below 0%. Margin of safety can either increase or decrease based on the ratios that we're going to look at in just a moment. And the severity that the margin of safety will increase or decrease by will be determined by using a scale. When we're using four colors in our scale, bright red will mean a 5% increase, orange will mean no change, light green will mean a 5% deduction, and bright green will mean a 10% deduction from our margin of safety. When we're using three colors, bright red will mean a 5% increase, orange will mean no change, and bright green will mean a 5% deduction from margin of safety. The first metrics that we'll be using are the margin and EBIT growth. The EBIT has gone up over the years, going from $8.4 billion in 2013 to over $12 billion in 2022. The average EBIT growth during this period was 4.5%, which is no change in the margin of safety. Looking at the margin, this one has also increased, going from 47% in 2013 to 59.5% in 2022. The average margin growth during this period was 2 which is a 5% deduction from a margin of safety. The next two metrics that we'll be looking at are the dividend growth and the payout ratio. The dividends have gone up over the years, going from $1.92 a share annually in 2013 to $3.76 a share in 2023. The average dividend growth during this period was 7%, which is a 5% deduction from a margin of safety. The payout ratio, however, is sitting at a very high 119.5%, which is, looking at our scale, a 5% increase in the margin of safety. The final two metrics that we'll be looking at are the debt to EBITDA and return on invested capital. To get a debt to EBITDA ratio, we have to take the debt of the company, subtract the cash from it, and divide it by the EBITDA. Out of this, we get the amount of years of EBITDA it takes for the company to pay off all of their debt. For Altria, this is sitting at just under 2 years, in this case a 181% debt to EBITDA ratio. The return on invested capital, for Ultra, is sitting at a very nice 29.8%. And looking at our scale, this is a 5% deduction in the margin of safety. Looking pretty good so far for Altria. Let's go look at the valuation models next to determine the intrinsic value of the company. The first valuation model that we'll be using is the discounted cash flow model. I've imported the free cash flow of Altria from 2013 to 2022. The average growth in our free cash flow annually during this period has been sitting at just under 12.5%. And I'm projecting a free cash flow growth of 4.5% annually for the next 10 years. With this percentage, we'll determine the future free cash flow for Altria and determine a terminal year of valuation using a perpetual growth rate of 3% and a discount rate of 9%. This leaves us with a sum of free cash flow of $145.8 billion. And to get our equity value, we have to add the cash and equivalents and subtract the debt giving us an equity value of $123.1 billion. And dividing this by the amount of shares outstanding, we get a discounted cash flow price per share of $68.80, which is a 51.57% upside from the current price. The second model that we'll be using is the dividend discount model. I've imported the dividend payouts of Altria going from four years ago to the current year. On average, the growth rate has been sitting at 4.12% and I'm projecting a future growth rate in all of their dividends of 2%. This is quite low since their payout ratio is currently very high and I'd like to see this decrease to project a higher dividend growth. I will once again be using a discount rate of 9% in this valuation, leaving us with a dividend discount model price per share of $54.79, which is a 20.71% upside out of this model. 
The next model that we'll be using is Graham's revised valuation formula. In this model, we take a look at the earnings per share that Altria is generating, the growth rate estimate projected by Wall Street, and the current yield of AAA corporate bonds in relation to the average yield of AAA corporate bonds, always sitting at 4.4. And we go by the theory of Benjamin Graham that a PE of a company with no growth should never exceed 7. And looking at all of these metrics, we get a fair value of $35.77, which is a 21.21% downside from the current price. The fourth model that we'll be using is the multiple valuation. In this model, we take a look at similar companies to Altria, take a look at their stock price and their earnings per share. This way, we can determine the average PE multiple in the industry, which in this case is sitting at 12.03. All we have to do to get a fair value out of this model then, is to multiply by the earnings per share that Altria is generating, which is $3.11 a share, giving us a fair value of this model of $37.40, which is a 17.6% downside from the current price. And the last model that we'll be using is the mean reversion theory. In this model, we go by the theory that a company will always trade above or below its mean, and the metrics that we use to determine this are the dividend yield and the PE ratio. In this case, I've imported the dividend yield of the past 5 years, and on average it has been sitting at 7.48, while the current yield is sitting at 8.27. This means it's undervalued on this metric. Doing the same with the PE ratio, the average P ratio of the past 5 years has been sitting at 15.59, while the current P ratio is sitting at 14.59, indicating that it's once again undervalued on this metric as well, leaving us with a fair value of $49.36, which is a 8.75% upside of this model. If you want to get access to all of the models that I use in my videos, and much more, you can check the description from my Patreon link. Anyways, getting the self-promotion out of the way, let's go look at the final overview of evaluation next. Looking at our final overview, we've imported the discounted cash flow, discount dividend, Graham's valuation, the multiple valuation, and the mean reversion theory price per share, giving us an average of $49.22. On margin of safety, we've determined earlier using a 25% standard margin of safety, then looking at by 5% for the margin growth, 5% for return on invested capital, and adding 5% for the payout ratio, leaving us with a 20% margin of safety. Applying this margin of safety, we get a fair value of $39.38, and with the current price of $45.39, we get a downside of 13.25%, indicating that it's currently a sell. However, if this is a stock that you solely hold for income, then it should still be a fine hold for the coming years. And keep in mind that on Dividend Kings, there's usually a premium added on the stock price. If there's any other companies that you would like to see me cover on this channel, please let me know in the comments. And thanks for watching.